Hey, it's Chris, and today we are finally talking about iOS 13, the beta. I've had it on my iPhone XR for a while, and then I stuck it on my daily driver, which I hate saying, daily driver. Please don't let me say that ever again. But I stuck it on my iPhone XS Max, and I've been playing around with it, and it's finally time to talk about it here on Daily Tech. Now there's a few features that I think deserve their own video at some point in the future. I know we got some time before iOS 13 actually is official and comes out. And so I'm not gonna talk about CarPlay today because wow, that is awesome. Definitely needs its own video. Like the new dashboard view, it's insane. Also, Apple Notes. There's a lot of little things that are just like, why wasn't this there before? Also, the Reminders app. You guys know that I love it. I'm using it all the time and that got a major overhaul. So I'm gonna talk about that. I love the ability, for instance, to be able to trigger a reminder when I disconnect from CarPlay. There's all kinds of new fun stuff. There's also a few things that I feel like I've kind of covered already in the iPad OS content that I've produced. So I'm gonna link up those videos down below if you're interested in like the quick type keyboard and all the new text gestures, copy and paste and all that stuff. Link it up down below. So I actually wanna dig in and get into this video by talking about just some small, cool, fun things that I've run into that have kind of made me smile and it's kind of just fun to use. But let me just say before that, iPad OS, that was like transformative for the iPad. iOS 13 is not that way for the iPhone. It's more like these are a bunch of interesting features, a lot of small things that I'm gonna use all the time, daily, that are gonna make my daily iPhone experience better, but they're not like huge marquee banner features that is like gonna blow you away with one or two features. That's not what it's like. One of my favorite things that I've run into so far in iOS 13, which I love, is the ability to type into Siri. So from the home screen, you can swipe down, get that search bar, and you can type in something like a reminder, like remind me on next Tuesday to watch Daily Tech's latest video. And then you'll notice in the options, there's a Siri button there that you can tap and it will take action against whatever you typed, including being able to make a reminder because maybe you're at the movie theater and you don't wanna voice something because everyone's gonna get mad at you, but they're gonna get mad at you anyways because you're typing around on your phone, but still, at least nobody's listening to what you're typing. That was probably an awful example. Oh, something that's really cool that I'm really liking is the ability to now delete apps from the update page in the App Store. So now when you're going to update stuff, you can be like, oh yeah, I never use this app and just swipe over and hit delete and it's gone. And actually that helped me clear out a bunch of apps, free up a little bit of space, which is pretty cool. Oh, some cool new stuff is living in the control center screen. So swipe down, get your control center going and long press on some stuff and see what's new. For instance, if you're gonna record your screen, you now have the option to turn the mic on or off if you wanna like dictate and talk about whatever it is that you're recording. I find that pretty cool. There's a new screen time option, like when you run out of time because you came up against your limit, that will let you say not just wait 15 minutes or not just get rid of the whole limit altogether for the rest of the day, but just one minute, give me one more minute. And that's actually pretty useful because sometimes that's all you need to like log out of a game or just read something really quick that you need to know about, but then keep that screen time intact. Another little thing that's kind of cool is the ability to share your photo with your contacts when you're texting. The option will disappear when you're having a conversation with somebody, share your contact info. And that's pretty cool because my contact book has no pictures for almost anybody, a few people. But for them to be able to shoot over like a good picture of them, that's kind of cool. It just upgrades the whole experience. And by the way, for me to have a good picture on everybody else's phone, <laughs> that's important too. Something else is kind of cool that I kind of appreciate because I've run into this and it's been a pain before is now you have the option to download large apps over cellular. Before, if it was over a certain amount, then it would just say you need to connect to Wi-Fi to download this huge app. Well, that doesn't exist anymore. You now have the option, if you have unlimited data or whatever, and you need whatever app you're after, you can download it no matter what. I can't tell you how many times I've been traveling and I'm bored or something, I wanna download a game, and I couldn't because I ran into that stupid limit. Well, that's a thing of the past. All right, so let's get into some of the bigger things. And I wanna start with something I don't think a lot of people are gonna cover as like the main cool thing that they like, but that's FaceTime awareness, or actually attention awareness, or I don't know what they're calling it, but it's like FaceTime will now correct your eyes when you're looking at the screen if you're not looking at the camera. So when I'm FaceTiming somebody, I, I hate to say this, but I'm actually always looking at myself because I'm curious, like, what am I looking like on the other end? And so if I'm looking at myself or I'm looking at the person that I'm talking to, which would have been a better idea, 
it doesn't matter. It, my eyes are not going to look like they're looking at the camera. Well, now FaceTime's attention, awareness, correction, whatever they're calling it, will correct that for you. So it looks like you are looking at the camera and therefore looking at the person that you're talking to all the time. Kind of weird, almost kind of creepy in a way because it's not real, it's not reality, but better because I think it makes for a stronger, better connection with whoever you're talking to. So it's a subtle little AI thing that actually has pretty cool and big implications. Siri Shortcuts has gotten some cool new abilities. Now, I made a whole video about this a while back and I probably need to update that with all kinds of new tips and tricks and whatever to really help people use this more because I admit myself, Siri Shortcuts is not something that I use every single day. I use it every now and then. I definitely use it weekly, but I could get a lot more out of it. So thumbs up if you wanna see that video with more shortcuts, tips, and stuff. But in Siri Shortcuts, we now have some new automations. So you can trigger shortcuts based on events, for instance, like an Apple Watch workout, or travel, like before you leave, or settings, like when you connect to your home Wi-Fi. So for instance, I could set something up so that when a motion detector down in the studio goes off, then maybe the lights come on exactly how I want them all over the studio, for instance, automatically. And then maybe they turn off automatically when there's no motion detected. There's some really cool stuff here. Hey, let me just point out, and maybe you already noticed, but this video doesn't have a sponsor. So if you wanna support the channel and me, and if you got any value out of this video or our other content, you can check out the links down in the description or just go to mysliceapple.com to check out some amazing Apple accessories that when you purchase, we get a small portion of. A lot of what's really cool in iOS 13 that you're gonna use all the time has to do with photo and video stuff. Like now, for instance, when you take a photo, you've got all the editing tools that you would ever need built right in. So you don't have to open up a separate app like you used to have to. And there are a lot of great third-party apps out there. It's just more convenient to not have to open them to edit your photos. So it's cool to have all of that stuff just built right in. But what's almost even more exciting than that to me is the new ability to auto enhance what your videos look like. You know the little auto button when you hit edit auto for photos? Well, you can do that for videos now. And it takes longer because you got a bunch of frames, basically a bunch of pictures that it has to go through and correct, but it really makes your videos pop and looks so much better. On top of that, you can finally really easily rotate your videos. So sometimes when I'm taking a video and I meant to take it like in landscape, sometimes it ends up in portrait and it was a pain to have to open up iMovie or something and get that all sorted out. Now I can easily do it by just hitting edit. Also, all of this stuff is non-destructive. That means if you do something and you totally jack it all up and you mess it up, well, you don't have to worry about it. It's non-destructive. You can just reset it back to the original, which is really a good thing for just like peace of mind. Something else that's kind of cool that I actually thought, I'm not gonna get anything out of this, but I actually ended up liking was the high key mono portrait lighting. So all the portrait lighting before, I haven't been a huge fan of, right? I take portrait photos sometimes, not always, because it needs a lot of improvement still but this is something I think is actually gonna be useful. So this actually will white out the background behind you wherever you are, and it works pretty good. So you kind of maybe, if you're in a chair or something, it might get like the headrest. Adjust where you are to make sure that's gonna look really good. But if you get it looking right, I think this is gonna be great for like profile photos, right, on Twitter or LinkedIn, or if you need like a professional business shot or something, this is gonna be an awesome thing. It's not something you're gonna use all the time, but it is going to be important for certain key times in your life, I think. There's also a brand new, completely overhauled interface for browsing through the photos that you already have taken. And I'm not gonna say a whole lot about this, other than to say, I really like it. It took a little bit of time to get used to, but it's something that you have to experience for yourself. Just seeing it on the screen is not gonna do it for you. Once you're in there and you're digging around, I think you're gonna really like it. I also wanna talk a little bit about the updates to the Mail app. I have this thing where I go through cycles of trying all these third-party apps that can replace Apple's built-in apps, whether it's mail or to-do stuff, whatever it is, calendar, and I always end up coming back to Apple's own stuff. Why? Because it just works. But the problem is I end up missing out on what I feel are some really cool features. So I end up trading those new features, shiny stuff for just like reliability and simplicity. Well, I've been back in the Mail app for a while. As you guys know, if you're a subscriber or a technician, 
I used to really like Astro. It was an amazing app, but it got shut down like so many other great apps. And I had a conversation with people at Superhuman and I wasn't quite ready to sign up for $30 a month yet because there's this whole crazy process. That's something I could talk about in a whole different video. So I'm back with Apple Mail and I'm really excited that it's getting some new features. Like for instance, I really like that it can notify me when I get an important reply. And I really like the new formatting bar, which makes it like desktop class formatting. So it's kind of hidden, it's just a little arrow. You tap it, it swipes over, and it opens up this whole new world of formatting options. And it's not just text either. It's not like just to turn your text blue or something. You can get in here and just attach like a photo or a scan. You can get in there and make a drawing that you're gonna attach and send. It's really making email a lot more powerful out of the default mail app. And I can't move on without saying you can finally mute an overactive thread. So if you're copied on like a thread with 10 or 20 other people and it keeps pinging your inbox and it's just annoying, you can finally mute that if you don't really need to be a part of it. And that's very useful. So if you're an AirPods fan, there's some really cool new features for your AirPods in iOS 13. Number one, the ability to announce your messages. That's just convenient. Right, But what a lot of people are gonna find even cooler is the ability to finally have AirPlay going out to two different Bluetooth devices. So if you and your friend wanna listen at the same time, you can connect their AirPods and both listen without having to share your AirPods, which is gross, or having to use a splitter, like a wired splitter with the Y in it, um, like you had to back in the day. Something that's really gonna be awesome that I think a lot of people are thinking about in terms of the iPad mostly as opposed to the iPhone is external file storage. So I know somebody, and you probably do too, who doesn't wanna pay for iCloud. And their phone is jam packed and they bought the cheapest phone that there was and they don't have any room for anything. And they're having to like delete photos to take new photos. Well, for those people and for lots of other applications, the ability to actually plug in a thumb drive, an external drive, or actually like a power drive, <laughs> whatever kind of drive you wanna plug in, and transfer and archive and store stuff, that's gonna be a really huge thing. All right, the last thing I wanna mention in this video is just dark mode, which I've told you before, I tend to like better on mobile devices. Like on my iPhone, I could leave it on all the time and like it. I wasn't sure I was going to, but now that I've played with it, I do like it. I like dark mode notes. I like dark mode news. Those things look cooler and make photos pop more. And I'm used to that, I like that. On the Mac, it's not my favorite, actually, to just have on by default. And so for most of my devices, I actually have it set to be automatic with the sunrise and sunset. But on the iPhone especially, I feel like it makes the most sense there. And I do really like it. All right, so CarPlay, Apple Notes, Reminders, these are separate videos that I plan on making and I'm excited about making, especially the CarPlay. It's such a needed upgrade. It's been like four years with no upgrades and this is so much better. And I know the CarPlay video I made last time was very popular, so I think probably you guys are gonna be excited about this too. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that stuff and ring the bell. I hate saying this, I hate having to, but if you really don't wanna miss it, make sure you do that. Otherwise, uh, make sure to follow at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram, on Twitter, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.